So in shear balance, input term supposed to be E in x direction at x multiplied by area perpendicular to it. That's mean WH. This is input term. Output would be exactly the same except that the coordinate would be x plus delta x multiplied by WH. Is there any force acting on our system? No, there's no external force. Is there any ex extra work? No. So no production term either. These two would give you this kind of shear balance equation. Drop this WH, divide everything by delta X, takes limit delta X approaching zero, you end up with differential equation like this. Integrate this equation, you will have constant heat flux. Okay? Then, in x direction, combined flux in x direction is simply Qx plus the convection term plus the work. And work in x direction would be something like this. If you experience, you should see right away that velocity is zero everywhere because our shell here stands in the solid. So there is no velocity, no convection in solid. You end up with conduction only. Okay? Right now, we are setting shear balance in, in this material first. We do not consider outside the wall at this moment, just heat transfer inside the wall. All right? So you end up with Ex equal to Qx, and Qx, according to Fourier law, is minus K dt by dx. So at the end, you put this back to shear balance. You get Qx equal to minus k dt by dx equal to constant C1. And I can call this C1 to be Q0 of flux at any point. Okay? The point is, even though I put shell in this layer, but you can move the shell into that, the first layer and third layer as well. If the shell is conducted in here, conductivity will be K1. Here will be K2 and K3 respectively. So if you write down the equation obtained from each region, from region number one, the equation should give you minus K1 dt by dx equal to K0 to Q0, I'm sorry. You can integrate it. Right? In region one, we integrate it from x0 to x1. So temperature will start from T0 to T1. Now this is uh, integration with limit. You don't need integration constant. In other words, integration like this is just like you apply boundary condition right away. From this, you get T0 minus T1 equal to Q over K1, X1 minus X0. That's the first equation. So from region number one, 
you get T0 minus T1 equal to Q0 by K1, X0 minus X1. Oops, X1 minus X0. Similarly, if you apply the same equation here for region number two, you should be able to integrate it and you get something like this. All right? Now let me ask you this. Do you think the heat flux in here in the first layer and the heat flux in the second layer, are they the same? Yes? Can you see that? Can you see that the flux here and flux there are the same? They are the same as long as the area here are constant. If you take energy balance, energy in and energy out, per unit area is supposed to be equal. As long as the unit area is equal, the whole amount of energy transfer in and transfer out is supposed to be equal according to the energy balance. All right? So that's why I can put Q0 in both equations. However, if the unit area are not equal like this, then the flux may not be constant anymore. Okay? For the third region, you have T2 minus T3 equal to K, Q0 divided by K3, X3 minus X2. All right, so the first layer, second layer, third layers are already done. Then we have the air inside and the air outside. Right now, we are going to use Newton's law of cooling because it's just simple, very simple to do. How to use it? In region A, inside the furnace, we can apply Newton's law of cooling. According to Newton's law of cooling, heat flux equal to heat transfer coefficient multiplied by temperature difference. This is Newton's law of cooling. Okay? So we know that as long as the area, cross-section area is constant, the heat flux in these materials supposed to be equal to the heat flux coming into that material, okay? So in this layer, if you consider a thin film here, the heat flux through the film should equal to the heat flux into this material. That's also equal to Q0. That amount is applied here, that's Q0. Heat transfer coefficient in A layer is called HA, for example. And then, Newton's law of cooling should, I mean, when you use Newton's law of cooling, driving force here, you need to put high temperature subtracted by low temperature. High temperature is Ta, low temperature is T0, okay? So this is Ta minus T0. In Newton's law of cooling, you need to put direction of heat transfer by yourself. You need to know that heat will transfer from high temperature to low temperature. Okay? So if I rearrange the equation, I will get Ta minus T0 equal to Q0 divided by HA. Similarly, for region B, Again, Q equal to H delta T. In region B, the heat that is transferred from this layer supposed to be received by the thin layer of air. 
the amount of heat transferred out and the amount of heat received by this thin layer supposed to be equal and equal to Q0 as well. Okay? If you call the heat transfer in that layer to be Hb, temperature difference supposed to be high temperature subtracted by low temperature. High temperature is T3, low temperature is Tb. Okay? So if you rearrange it, you get T3 subtracted by Tb equal to Q0 over Hb. All right? So if you take the first equation, second equation, and third equation, combine them together. If you add them up, this term cancel out, you get T0 minus T3. Right? Again, Q0, there are the same. You can take it inside. What you have left on the left hand side is T0 minus T3. If you also add with these two equations, T0 there and T0 there cancel out, T3 and T3 there cancel out. What you have left would be Ta minus Tb. So that means you bring five equations. Equation one, two, three, four and five here combine. Okay? On the left hand side you have TA and TB only. On the right, each equation has Q0 as the common term. I can take it out. Okay? The first equation I, I'm going to start with this one. The rest of the term would be 1 over HA. And then go back to equation 1 here. I'm going to have this term divided by K, right? So plus X1 minus X0 divided by K1. Okay? Sometimes in the future, in unit operation, this one may be thought of as the thickness of the first layer. This is the thickness of material one. Thickness of material two divided by its conductivity. And also thickness of layer three divided by its conductivity. Everything here combined is called 1 over u, where u here is called overall heat transfer coefficient. <laughs> 